Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Alviso. No, this is not current. I am still laid up with a broken collarbone. No training for me, but um, recovery's going really well. So I'm going back through the archive of old Alviso footage. This one's from a few months ago, and um, I'm just trying to stay motivated. Keep my chin up. Already thinking about getting back out there. Excited about the prospect, but for now, we're talking about old races. Let's get into it. Okay, but before we get into it, wanted to quickly thank the sponsor of this video, and that is Skillshare. Yes, yeah, Skillshare again, because I am hooked on this website, you guys. Um, look, I am a geologist. Um, I, th I don't do this for a living. It's very much a, just a passion of mine, and I wish I knew about these online courses that Skillshare offers years ago when I first started the channel. Because I often get asked, like, how, Jeff, how did you learn these skills? And it was a rocky road for me, but it is made easy now. So, for example... This recent thing I'm trying to do is build out this team a little bit, so it's not just me having to edit videos. So to help me through that, I have been going through this course called Video Editing in Teams by Jordi Vandeput. Now, basically what it does is it outlines the basics on how to set up a RAID, how to set up a network attached storage, and even how to do remote editing over the internet in Adobe Premiere Pro with the end goal of me trying to get more content onto YouTube for you guys to enjoy. So, um... If you have a passion project, if you have some creative endeavor that you want to, to check out, I am almost certain there is a Skillshare course for that. There's thousands to choose from. So I urge you to check out the link in the description, a free month-long subscription to the first 1,000 people to click that link. Yes, they're offering it again. So if you missed this last time, I had a promotion going. We're starting it again. If you're listening to this right now, chances are there's a spot open. Check out the link in the description. And with that said, let's talk about some bike racing. Okay, so we're not going to waste any time here. First lap attack from the front by Blaine, which is an interesting choice. You're going to see him launch it here in a second. He's looking back, looking back. There he goes. And this is why you don't attack from the front. Um, I mean, I'm doing a lot of power, right? I'm doing like 700 watts. But I'm in his draft, which means he's doing like 1,000 watts. It's really hard to get that separation. A good attack means you get that separation, and then it really forces people um, into an uncomfortable situation. Like right here, for example. I, look, I check back, we're going 33 miles an hour in this tailwind, and I realize that we're doing a lot of damage behind, so um, yeah, I'm just gonna continue applying the pressure up at 400 watts now, have some strong guys with me, let's see if we can uh, roll the dice here and make something work. But no, no such luck. These, these first lap breakaways almost never work, we're quickly brought back. Um, and then with a really quick counterattack from strongman Nick, you can see now here comes Super Dave and then others, that's John. And um, I'm stuck on the front here, and I'm forced to do this one more effort just to stitch this back up. Which is not something that I want to do, but I realize that this is the type of attack with, these, with the, the quality of riders up the road, where I just want to nip this in the bud, I don't want to let this gap go out to 15-20 seconds. So um, I just decide to commit some more energy, bring this one back. And then of course, here goes Dave once again, and we're, we're off to the races on lap number one, guys. I like this. Once we hit... The tailwind section for the second time, I decide to spike it up just one last time to see if Blaine and I can get across to this small group of three up the road. And we do, but I end up uh, bringing most of the field with us, unfortunately, and here we go again. Dave with the counterattack through the crosswind section into the headwind. Not an ideal time to be chasing, but just like on the last lap, I'm kind of forced to make this effort in order to keep the field together. These first two laps were crazy. At 360 watts normalized for the first nine minutes, and still no breakaway was successful. So that brings us to a couple laps later. We're um, about 13 kilometers to go. And it wasn't until now did the attack start to start to begin again. I think we were all just kind of reset after just a, a crazy first two laps. Um, and it started with Blaine here on the left, putting in a big one. But I saw it coming, so I was able to respond right away, get into his draft quickly. And by the time he elbows me through in the crosswind section, I just continued to apply pressure. I end up finding myself alone off the front, and I decide I'm going to just shut it down. I'm not going to commit to this, and this is important because you kind of have to know your own strengths and your own weaknesses. In this case, it's a weakness of mine. I, I don't have the, the frenemy go solo because YOLO 13-kilometer solo attack. Um, I just don't have that power profile. I am much better at sprinting. You guys who watch this, uh, this channel um, probably know that by now, but um, I could put my head down and, and hold threshold for a while, but the field would probably be able to pull me back, especially with the talent that's back there. So I decide um, that's not a good idea. I think better of it, and I just kind of roll at like kind of sweet spot 300-ish for a while just to make sure that they're going to have to do some work to bring me back, but I am not digging myself a hole. I just want to get back in the field. I want to reset the situation and set things up so they're more favorable for me taking the win. 
So I end up getting caught, and then uh, Max goes right here while I'm stuck on the front. And again, out of position. Like, I shouldn't be on the front right here. It's really hard to respond to attacks when you're on the front. And this is a good move. You guys know Max is strong. I've done a video uh, showing how Max uh, has, has won Alviso. He's done it a few times, I think. So this is a good move. I cannot let get away because I just might not see him again. So I end up waiting for the crosswind section, and then I, I nuke it in the crosswind. And um, this is one of the harder efforts of the day. Uh, because I pick up Super Dave on the way, um, who is about 10 seconds off the front of the chasing field, and then another 10 seconds in front of us is, uh, is Blaine, John, and Max. Super threatening group. So Dave and I have to commit to this. And um, I know he's good for a couple of pulls, because just like me, I know that he needs to bring that back if he wants a shot at winning this bike race. So we end up making it across, and this appears to be the breakaway of the day. A group of five strong, no reason we can't just rotate turns and make that happen, but this is amateur bike racing, so <laughs> people immediately start skipping poles, and I'm guilty of this too. Um, the pace slows down, and then people start attacking, and this is just not what a breakaway is supposed to do, you guys. Um, <laughs> we can't seem to play nice together, so instead, I try to force a breakaway from the breakaway, which works. So now Max, Blaine, and I are coming through one lap to go. This is looking really promising. But then even this one becomes immediately dysfunctional. Come on, Blaine, take a chance. <laughs> Fuck you, Jeff. <laughs> I'm not telling you there. I'll ride with you. And this is why I love bike racing, you guys. Crazy strategy moments like these make for the absolute best type of racing. Plus, you get to be super competitive with your friends for an hour per week <laughs> and then be pals immediately after the race. Like, I'm, I, we're all best buds at Alviso, but things get competitive and heated during the race. It's fantastic. I love it. So in this case, Max doesn't want to tow Blaine and I to the line. I don't want to tow them to the line. So we end up actually getting caught inside of one kilometer to go. So Max isn't going to wait around to find out what's going to happen in the last kilometer. Everyone's tired. It's been a crazy race. And he just launches off the front taking John with him, and then goes Brian. And uh, again, I'm stuck on the front, not liking this situation. 550 meters to go, you never want to just be on the front. But I have to manage the gap, so I have to I have to use some power here. You see I'm up at about 400 watts, because I just have to manage that gap. I don't want to lead it out. So fortunately, up, oh, take that back. <laughs> I was going to say that Super Dave takes it up, but he doesn't. Instead, it's Blaine. So this is good. This is good. I'm going to try to get a lead up by them. But of course, they don't want to lead me out. So now we're 250 meters to go in a tailwind, and I just have to launch immediately. And I go, and I, the timing of this is extremely important because I end up boxing in Blaine and Super Dave on the right, not allowing them to come around me until about 100 meters to go. Um, in fact, let, let's watch that one more time in slow motion. And this is the critical moment right here. We have Blaine on the front who's been leading things out for a while. He's beginning to fade. My big concern is Dave, Super Dave. So by me going a little bit early and keeping it close on the left, he's got a couple of options. Both are bad. If he goes to the right, he's going to get boxed in by the slowing riders that we're about to pass. And then if he stays behind Blaine, well, Blaine's fading. So his only option is to wait until I pass him on the left. But by the time he does that, there's only like 100 meters left and we're going 41 miles an hour. So that's how I took down another edition of Alviso. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. That way, as I go through the archive of old Alvisos in the coming weeks as I recover, um, you guys won't miss out on new content. So stay tuned. Catch you in the next one.